my, uh, my visual for today has been on the wall for a long time. You know I like to have little props. And that's why the plant's out of the way here. The visual is this thermometer and thermostat. Now, most people hang out in the world thinking that they're a thermometer. What does a thermometer do? It's cold outside, it goes down. It's hot outside, it goes up. That's what a thermometer does. It registers what's going on in the outer condition, the environment of the world. It's conditional based. Doesn't know what else to do except be a thermometer. It registers, I'm hot, I'm cold. I like it, I don't like it. My day is good, my day is bad. There it is, it just happens to me rather than through me. Most people spend their life believing that they are a thermometer, right? That's all we do. We wake up and I'm kind of this today, oh, I'm that today, I'm this, I'm that. Up and down, up and down. But the truth reminds us, we are not a thermometer, we are a thermostat. What does a thermostat do? Come on. Regulates. That's right, it regulates the set point. So you, you have within you this ability that you've got to turn up your thermostatic set point. That's what we're here to do, to find out what it is and then break through it and turn it up. Nobody else can do it. We're here to tune in, turn on, tap into and turn up our thermostatic set point. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what we're here to do. You are not a thermometer. And I've got to tell you, for the last couple of weeks, I have been a thermometer. I feel good. I feel not so good. I feel in the middle. I'm feeling old. I'm feeling young. Up and down, up and down. Where is your mind? Your thermostat. Turn up that thermostatic set point and awaken to who you truly are. That's what we're here to do. That's what people are joining this church for. They're really excited about the idea that I can tune in, turn on, tap into, and turn up my own thermostatic set point. No one can do that for me but me. But you've got to recognize what that set point is. And a lot of what I got and you got was from mom and dad. There was a certain set point of abundance you could have in your life. And you hit that place, and then all of a sudden, you can't go any further. Or you do, and you drop back down again. They say when people win the lottery, they get all this money, they break through their thermostatic set point, you follow them in one year, they're back at the same place they were before. They had not raised their consciousness up to receive it and hold on to it. You have a thermostatic set point for the amount of love you'll get in your life, you allow in your life. It comes a lot from our parents and what we got handed love ourselves. The amount of joy you allow in your life, the amount of anything in your life comes with your set point. So it's really good to bring awareness to, well, what is my thermostatic set point here? Most people have no idea what it is. But you and I who are in this room, we know a secret. We can bring awareness and find out what that thermostatic set point is. And usually something will happen to show us. I shouldn't have gone anywhere last Sunday afternoon after church service. I shouldn't have gone to our friend's house for a couple of days. We signed up for it before. I was jet lagged, tired. Everything I do takes twice as long now from my trip to Hawaii back to here. And I shouldn't have said yes to going. A part of me knew I said, don't go. But I made the choice. I'm going to go and be there with all those people. I made the choice to take a room in the house upstairs in the attic room, upstairs in the attic room. I chose that, no one did for me. And then they had this, you know the 1968 futon beds that when we were younger, we could all sleep on? I can't sleep on them anymore. I have no butt, no legs left. I'm just gonna hurt us, everything. It's like cement, it's like sleeping in a parking lot. Now, just the whole night, I was like tossing and turning. So you might say when I woke up in the morning at our friend's house, I was in a bit of a foul mood. And I, I, I actually, I was, I was depressed. My energy was, you know what depression is? It's when the kundalini goes down and doesn't go back up. That's what depression is. The energy is pushed down, not making light of it. I was depressed. My energy was moving downward, in a downward spiral. And there's nothing worse than being privately depressed when you get to be publicly depressed. <laughs> Isn't that special? You get to do it in front of all your friends who've never seen you like this before. And they run around going, what's the matter? Richard's always the one to bring us up. 
We've known him for years. Go to Richard. He'll bring joy into your life. And I'm like, oh, man. We're going to meditate this morning together, I said, and which I love. I, I'm going to meditate by myself. It's like, whoa. So I sit in my own room while our friends in the other room with the two dogs and three people are meditating for 45 minutes. And the first thing I do is I spend 10 minutes of my meditation time crying and weeping and sobbing which is what I needed to do. I needed to cry and weep and sob. That's what I did. And I went, wow, as I blew all this out of my nose, this is depression. This is what this feels like. And I'm not making light of it at all. I have a dear friend who I saw when I was in Hawaii, who for two years has been depressed over the end of the loveless life relationship with a woman. And he's not been able to get over it. Anybody know something you can't get over? He's got his thermostatic set point on, on the person left me, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling terrible, I'm depressed, I can't accept it, I can't move on. And that's where he's living, telling the same story over and over and over again. I've been listening to it for two years. And then when he saw me come hobbling in, he saw me last year, we ran on the beach for five months. Like this. I said, Whoa, look at you. And I said, well, this is what's happened to my thermostatic setting. My, 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 my level of physical ability has been lowered. But I'm doing great. I'm fine. My spirit has never been better. I am grateful for this opportunity to take what I would never thought I'd ever have to face and face it and go beyond it. I am not a victim of circumstances. I'm responding to what's going on. I'm not being torn apart by it on a good day, on a good day, on a good day. So I, I got to see that with him. He doesn't have what you and I have. You, in the world, people think they're, th they're a thermometer. Things go up, they go down, the stock market's up, it goes down, I'm happy, I'm sad. It's all about what happens externally. It's not about what happens externally. It's about what you choose to do with it internally. And you can turn up your own thermostatic set point at will, and sometimes, you have to get to that barrier to see what it is. So you then can rise above it and turn it up. Turn it up. There's no limit to how much of that love, that joy, that peace, that abundance you can have in your life not tied to conditions. You can live from that place. You don't need to live a condition-based life. And I'm, I'm, I'm screaming loud to myself. Do you hear that? I'm screaming loud to myself. Conditions do what they do. They go up and they go down. We're happy and then we're sad. It happens. Um, our, our, our best and greatest friend, Havasu, a little dog, a little 18 pound dog, she's dying. She's, she's in the last throes of the cancer that was in her mouth a few weeks ago and she's, she's leaving us. She's, and that's sad. You know, that, that, that sets the thermometer to sadness and, and pain. These animals, don't we just love them as much as almost our children? And there they are. And you know what? She is fine. I want to report to you that Havasu is doing great. She is not caught up in our drama. She's just like, well, I'm not hungry anymore. Uh, maybe I'll eat something. I'll chase a squirrel. I'll come in and lie down on the floor. Hold me. I'm limp. And she has the look of the beyond. But every one of us has the look of the beyond. This is so nice but it is temporary, period. Comes, it goes. I know that. We've been through this before with children and friends and countless hundreds of people who we've been with. You come into a body and guess what? You leave a body. It is going to happen. What you do with what's going to happen guaranteed, that is your, your choice. You can make it uh, well, we only have it for three more months, or another year, or three days. What do we want to do with our last few moments? Sad, or we have, we have her, we love her, she's wonderful. And we've made a little pact with her, we told her this the other night. Because you know, when the Dalai Lama dies, the present incarnation, they look for another Dalai Lama with objects that the last Dalai Lama loved. So when this time they believe the reincarnating Buddha comes back again and again and again. So when this Dalai Lama dies, they take the things that he loved most and they go and find children and they stick the objects in front of them. And if the baby recognizes the objects, that's the Buddha come back. We have a plan. 
We got her ball, her favorite toy, and her bowl, her dish, because she loves to eat. We're going to bring that to the next puppy we choose to get and go, is it you? Is it you? <laughs> woof, 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 woof. She starts to chase it. We'll go, it's her. She's back. Take that puppy. I don't care what kind of dog it is. We know that's her come back. Do you feel that now? That's what happens when you are able to work with raising your own thermostatic set point. Everything comes to meet you and greet you and help you to awaken. And nothing is left out of that process of confirming you're on the right path. I had a dream on Tuesday night, and I shared it Wednesday morning with, where's Jennifer Allen? Jennifer Allen, where are you? Did you hear this story? So Jennifer comes into my room, my dream, and, and she opens up an ironing board, and she goes, someone's here to help you iron your clothes to get the wrinkles out. And I said, okay. So she closes the door, and leaning up against the door is a 35-year-old Alvin Levy, my father. And he's got the same tattoo on his right peck that I do. It's an ohm symbol with the everlasting Hawaiian life around it, but it's smaller than mine, I have to add that. <laughs> and he looks at me, he's so handsome. It goes like this. That's all. He doesn't say anything. My dad never played that role for me in my life. At least I didn't know it. And when I woke up, I shared it with Jennifer. And Jennifer says to me, I think I know what that might mean. She's out there in the thing getting all the stuff ready for the garage sale. I think it means that your dad is here to help you straighten your life out, get the wrinkles out. He's here to help you. I said, well, that would be a very different role from the one you should take. <laughs> but I'll accept it. I'll accept it. I'll take it. So as I'm walking out, I notice stuff that's being sold at the garage sale. And I look down, and there's this thing screaming at me. And, and it's, I'm not taking my pants off. Relax. By the way, if I ever do, just get the hook. <laughs> that's a little bit too casual. A new person comes in. Anyway, I found this knee brace. And it's a very expensive knee brace, because I've been kind of trashing my knee the way I'm walking. And I went, wow, I'm going to put that on and see if it fits. And it was perfect. It's helping me stand tall. Lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. You are, we are not alone. Do you know that? Everything rushes out to greet you and meet you when you're working with your own internal thermostat. Get your eye off the opinions of others, the conditions of the world, and get into working with the one thing you can work with. And that's you and yourself. So, this is the talk that I needed to hear so badly. Um, here is the lesson summation for us to be able to take this home as we go on our way. So we have a choice. You can live as a thermometer or a thermostat. A thermometer is ruled by outside conditions. All it can do is react to its outer environment. A thermostat regulates its inner environment to respond to outer conditions. The only real dominion that we have, and the Bible says we have dominion, is over our own internal environment. It's not talking about anything external. It's talking about us. Two, we can set the thermostat to the amount of joy and happiness we want to have in our lives. We can set it for the amount of abundance we want to have in our lives. It's always God's good pleasure to give us the treasure, the kingdom, the queendom of heaven consciousness. Never is it withheld. We'll go to the third one now. In unity here in this room, we teach spiritual principles that allow us to tune in, turn on, tap into, and turn up our own internal thermostatic set point. I have to say that. You've got to join me. Tune in, turn on, tap into, and turn up our own internal thermostatic set point. There are no limits to how high we can raise our consciousness. No limits. And finally, when you find someone you love is in a frozen position, the best thing you can do is remember that keep your own thermostatic set point on high watch. Don't buy into it. My friends never bought in to my depression. They only held the high watch for me. They kept their thermostatic set point on high. And their warmth, their generosity of giving to me in that moment thawed my frozen position. 
And that's what we're here to do with each other. Help each other. Help each other. Lean on each other. And know we are not alone. These teachings are so important and practical in your life today. I invite you to use them, not just for yourself, but for the benefit of all <coughs> beings who share the planet with you. Namaste. Namaste.